Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 7 from IMC 2023. As usual, my strategy is to go over the process by which I obtained the solution rather than just giving you the solution. And along the way, you're going to like see some things that may or may not be helpful in the final solution. Okay, so here's the problem. Let V be the set of all continuous functions from 0, 1 to R, differentiable on 0, 1, and with the property that f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1, we want to find all constants alpha for which for every f in v there exists some xi in 0, 1 such that f of xi plus alpha is equal to f prime of xi. So the first thing was when I looked at this that kind of reminded me of differential equations. If you have had a course in ODE, ordinary differential equations, you have seen this technique of solving linear differential equations. Let's imagine you want to solve a linear differential equation y prime minus y equals t. How do you solve this? You multiply by an integrating factor. So what is an integrating factor? You multiply by some mu so that the left hand side becomes um, a derivative of something. So what does that mean? You want to write this one down as mu times y, pr y prime. So if you open this up, this would be mu y prime plus mu prime y. In order for these to match, you need mu prime to be minus mu. So you need the derivative of mu to be negative mu itself. And that is not very difficult to guess what mu would work, and that is e to the power of negative t. And my independent variable is, is t. We usually use t in differential equations, and think about that as uh, time. But it doesn't obviously matter what variable you want to use. So because of that, I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the power of negative t and see what I get. So let me rewrite the condition that they gave me. f of xi plus alpha is equal to f prime of xi. This is equivalent to, I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the power of negative xi and bring everything to the same side. So f prime of xi times e to the power of negative xi minus alpha e to the power of negative xi minus f of xi e to the power of negative xi is equal to 0. So these are obviously equivalent because e to the power of negative xi is never 0. Now, if you look at these two, these two uh, give you a product rule. These two terms give you the derivative of f of t e to the power of negative t evaluated at t equals xi. By the product rule, you get f prime of t e to the power of negative t plus f of t times negative e to the power of negative t. And when you plug in t equals xi, you get those two terms minus so that term becomes the derivative of alpha e to the power of negative t evaluated at t equals xi. But because of the negative sign that we get uh, from the chain rule, I would have to do plus sign here. So these are completely equivalent. And this is the same as the derivative of f of t e to the power of negative t plus alpha e to the power of negative t at t equals xi equals 0. So derivative of this equals 0 is exactly equivalent to what we had at the beginning. Now, if you look at this function, we are given some property about this function. We were given that f of 0 was 0 and f of 1 was 1. So let's call this one g of t. So g of t is f of t e to the power of negative t plus alpha e to the power of negative t. We know that g of 0 is equal to f of 0 plus alpha, which is alpha. And we also know that g of 1 is equal to f of 1 e to the power of negative 1 plus alpha e to the power of negative 1. f of 1 is 1, so that's e to the power of negative 1 plus alpha e to the power of negative 1, which is 1 plus alpha over e. Now, I would like to show that the derivative of this function at some point is 0. I know the Rolle's theorem. So, by the Rolle's theorem, if the values at the endpoints are the same, if g of 0 is equal to g of 1, then there is some xi such that g prime of xi is 0, and that's exactly what I wanted. So again, just to remind you, 
the Rolle's theorem tells us this. If you have two numbers a and b, and the function has the same value at the endpoints, so the function g of a and g of b are the same, the function is continuous over the closed interval and differentiable over the open interval, then there is some point xi in this case, they called it, that the derivative is zero. So if the endpoints have the same value, then we would have this. Now, what does this mean? Alpha equals one plus alpha over E means alpha E minus alpha is one, which is equivalent to alpha equals one over E minus one. So for one over E minus one, we know there is such a xi. Now, what if alpha is not equal to one over E minus one? If alpha is not one over E minus one, we need to come up with an example of g. So let's take f of t plus, let's look at what we had, f of t e to the power of negative t plus alpha e to the power of negative t. So I'm going to take that and set that equal to a t plus b and see if I can create a function f of t whose values at the endpoints are 0 and 1 and in fact its derivative is never that never satisfies the property that they gave us. So first of all, the derivative of f of t e to the negative t plus alpha e to the negative t is a. So we need this. We need a to be non-zero. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, let's evaluate f of t. f of t would be a t plus b times e to the t minus alpha. f of zero is b minus alpha, I would like this to be zero. And I also need f of one to be one. f of one is a plus b times e minus alpha. I would like this to be one. Let's see if we can find some a and b that satisfy this property. From here, we need b to be alpha. We'll take that and plug it into the bottom one. We get a plus alpha times e equals one plus alpha. This tells us that a is equal to 1 plus alpha minus alpha e divided by e, which means there is such a function unless this a is 0. So let's see when that happens. So a is 0 if and only if 1 plus alpha minus alpha e is 0, which is equivalent to saying alpha is equal to 1 over e minus 1, which is not true. So I assume that alpha is not 1 over e minus 1. So if alpha equals 1 over e minus 1, then such as I exists. Otherwise, there is a function f for which no such xi exists. And that brings me to the end of this solution. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you to check the rest of the videos on my channel. My focus is on problem solving and making sure that it's clear how we approach problems rather than just presenting to you with the solution. And I will see you in another video.